Here is the derivative of the hyperbolic cosecant. So uh, d dx of hyperbolic cosecant of x equals negative hyperbolic cosecant of x multiplied by the hyperbolic cotangent of x. All right. So um, just like with the last few videos, I want to write down a bunch of stuff and show you that there are uh, several different ways of doing this, and we're going to do it uh, one of the ways. Um, and we'll try to do it a different way from how we've done some of the other ones. So hyperbolic cosecant of x, um, first of all, that's the same thing, or that's pretty much just defined to be 1 over the hyperbolic sine of x. Okay? So we could do quotient rule on this, which is pretty much what we did in the last video with the hyperbolic secant, um, or we could do uh, something like, say this is sinh x to the negative first power, and then do a chain rule type thing. Um, and that's kind of how we did the hyperbolic uh, cotangent uh, a couple videos ago. Um, or we could do something like, let's say, this is, uh, okay, sinh of x is e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2, right? So 1 over sinh of x is going to be 1 over this, which means we take this and just flip it, okay? So uh, d dx of 1 over sinh of x is going to be d dx of the reciprocal of this which means 2 over e to the x minus e to the negative x. Um, and let's actually, let's go ahead and do it like this, uh, just so that we can see um, a proof of one of these derivatives just in a different way now. Uh, we don't want to keep doing it the same way over and over again. Uh, I guess maybe it would be good for consistency, but just, um, I just want to show you guys that there are many different ways of doing this kind of thing. Uh, and I want to show you kind of how the process would go for each one. So let's go ahead and do this here. Uh, we're going to do it this way. So we'll do the quotient rule on this. Um, so 2 up on the top, 2 is just a constant, and we can just pull it out. Um, but it might be a little bit easier to leave it here for now. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but let's just leave it in there for now. So uh, quotient rule on this. Okay, so what we're going to have is uh, bottom, which is e to the x minus e to the negative x. Oops. e to the x minus e to the negative x. Okay, so bottom times the derivative of the top. The top is 2. Let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, the top is 2, so its derivative is just 0. Okay, so we have bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So here, uh, the bottom is e to the x minus e to the negative x. So the derivative of that, we're going to do it term by term. Okay, so let's just look at the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the bottom is going to be d dx of e to the x minus e to the negative x, like this, okay? So this is our derivative of the bottom. Uh, this expression is what's going to go in here, okay? Um, so we just differentiate term by term, and we get d dx of e to the x is e to the x, and then we have minus, okay, minus uh, d dx of e to the negative x. So we've seen this a couple times before. Um, chain rule says derivative of e to a thing is just e to that thing times the derivative of that thing. Okay, so in this case, uh, the derivative of e to the negative x is just e to the negative x multiplied by the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. So then this equals uh, e to the x plus e to the negative x. Okay? So this minus and that minus combined to give us this plus here. So that's what happens over there. Um, okay, and then this is the derivative of the bottom. So e to the x plus e to the negative x. Uh, and then all of that is being divided by the bottom squared. So e to the x minus e to the negative x, and then squared. Let's zoom out a little bit. OK, so just to recap real quick, this is bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom, all divided by the bottom squared. So let's go ahead and simplify now. So e to the x minus e to the negative x times 0. That just zeroes out. That's good. Uh, then what do we have? Here's a minus sign, so let's pull it off. So minus um, 2 times e to the x plus e to the negative x all over e to the x uh, minus e to the negative x squared. All right, so that's what we got there. Let's zoom in a little bit now. So this whole expression up here uh, simplified to this here. OK, so now um, what can we do now? Let's go ahead and write this like this, uh, equals negative. So on the bottom, we have e to the x minus e to the negative x squared. 
So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say 2 over e to the x minus e to the negative x. Um, and then on a separate fraction, we'll multiply that by e to the x plus e to the negative x over e to the x minus e to the negative x. Okay? So if we zoom out a little bit and look at both of these together, we see that they are the same thing, right? So here, uh, it might be easier to see going from right to left, but here, um, e to the x minus e to the negative x squared, and then here, e to the x minus e to the negative x, e to the x minus e to the negative x, okay? So the bottoms are the same. And what about the tops? Uh, 2 times the quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x, and then the same thing here, 2 times the quantity e to the x plus e to the negative x, okay? Um, and it, these parentheses here are pretty much implied uh, because it's in a separate fraction. Um, but anyway, and then uh, minus sign and minus sign. So these are the same things here, and that's good. Okay, so what does all that mean? Um, we're running out of room, so let's go back up here. Uh, this, what is this right here? Well, here, minus sign, first of all. Uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 is equal to the uh, hyperbolic sign, and what we have is the reciprocal of that, right? So this is actually uh, 1 over uh, the hyperbolic sine of x, right? Um, so this, if you take this and flip it, then what you're going to get is the hyperbolic sine of x. So this, just by itself, is the reciprocal of that, which is 1 over singe, um, just by definition. And then this, uh, what is this? e to the x plus e to the negative x, all divided by e to the x minus e to the negative x. Uh, that is hyperbolic cotangent by definition, okay? Um, and 1 over hyperbolic singe, just by definition, um, just to save space, let's go ahead and rewrite this, uh, 1 over hyperbolic singe is equal to the hyperbolic cosecant. And this is our desired result here, um, equals negative hyperbolic cosecant of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x. And uh, that's the proof, uh, one of the many ways of doing the proof, that uh, derivative of hyperbolic cosecant is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x. Uh, so again, we just want to do this uh, a different way using the uh, exponential definition here just to show you how the process would go um, for this other way of doing the proof.